We have a lot to get to today. As I predicted yesterday, all of the walkouts turned out to be just a media propaganda campaign on behalf of gun control. It was not about solidarity with the slain students. It was not really about mourning over the slain students. It was not about America coming together around the cause of stopping violence in schools. It was a gun control program. That's all that was happening yesterday all across the country. It was not a unifying moment. It was a divisive one. It needn't have been yesterday. Wall-to-wall -wall coverage of all of the students walking out of their schools. So first we need to ask, how does such a thing get planned? Is such a thing spontaneous? Do you have a situation here where thousands, hundreds of thousands of students are just getting up and walking out of school at the same time because they heard online they were supposed to do so? Or are they being told by their teachers and the teachers' unions and all of the leftist administrators at school that it's a good thing for them to get up and leave class? Because I guarantee you that if I had gotten up and ditched class in high school, there would have been some sort of, some sort of excuse note needed. Right? You don't just get to leave class in the middle of class when you're in junior high or high school. You actually have to have an excuse for doing so. Otherwise, you are a truant. Right? So here, the schools themselves are writing the excuse notes. Now, let me just ask a question that's been asked by a lot of folks on the right. Let's say there were a pro-life walkout tomorrow. How many of these teachers do you think would be OK with the students leaving? If all the students just got up and walked outside to protest for 10 minutes, the 1 million abortions plus in the United States per year, if, if every student in America did that, how many of those teachers do you think would excuse the students, and how many of them do you think would actually punish the students? How many do you think would dock the students in some way? In other words, one of the problems here is that you have these leftist propaganda centers called our public schools that are taught by teachers who are members of teachers' unions, who are Democratic Party cronies, and then they use that position in order to promulgate a certain agenda. So all these students get up and they walk out. Of course, this thing really was organized in AstroTurf by the Women's March, and they used the same organizational structures in order to push it. The Women's March, of course, run by some of the worst people on planet Earth, members of the Louis Farrakhan contingent. Uh, and so they organized this whole thing as a gun control push. Now, what was so annoying about this, and I discussed it yesterday, read a bunch of letters from students, and I, I have a thousand more today. I mean, I really, I, I, I must have received at least 250 emails yesterday from students around the country who are upset about how they were treated yesterday during these walkouts. Yeah, I was hearing from tons of people yesterday that this was going to happen, and then it did that this turned into a propaganda effort that this was never about solidarity with the students. That if you said, listen, I am in favor of, of gun rights and I also feel terrible for what happened for the students, that you were treated like garbage. And the most obvious example of this is uh, clip 13. So yesterday, uh, there was a clip that was going around the internet, pretty amazing. Uh, one of the students walked out of class and did what I suggested, right? Brought a sign that was a pro-Second Amendment sign uh, that also expressed sympathy for the children who were killed. And he was escorted from the protest, right? He was told he couldn't be at the protest, and they actually tried to push him into a police car. Here's what it looked like yesterday. 505 says you cannot. Why? What do you think? I don't want to see it. I'm going to go stand outside, then. And I want to stop. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. So he was told to leave. He was told he couldn't stand with all of the students because for some reason or other, that was just unacceptable. Now, if he'd been holding a sign that said, stop guns now, do you think that would have happened to him? The answer, of course, is no. The video is posted to Facebook by Kenny McDonald, who's a student at New Prague High School in New Prague, Minnesota. The short video does not show what took place before or after the principal singled out the student. Here's what McDonald said. He says, kids at our school today walked out in honor of the 17 students killed in Florida. Students held signs that said, arm our teachers. They had two signs. A student walked out without saying a word, peacefully put up a sign which said, guns don't kill people, people kill people. And he was escorted off the property by our principal and threatened to be put in a police car. This violates the First Amendment. It makes me sick that they can do whatever they want. Please make this go viral. So. It's not been verified that the student's story is the entire truth. We'll have to hear from the school exactly what happened. But is there a question that if the student had been holding a sign that said, gun control now, that everything would have been fine for him? I have very little doubt that's the case. It was obvious what the networks were trying to do here. It's obvious what the media were trying to do here. Again, these are the same media who every year ignore the March for Life, which draws hundreds of thousands of people to Washington, D.C., and the coverage is always scant and minimal, even though it's a huge number of young people who are going to that particular march. You have this big school walkout that is sponsored by the left yesterday, and it's widely covered by the media. And of course, they're always, uh, you know, I don't want to slander all the students who walked out as people who are just taking advantage, although I will say that, you know, if I were a student in high school and I had the choice between sitting in class and walking out and ditching, I would ditch, right? That's true for the vast majority of students. So playing it as though all of these students are pro gun control, I think, is silly. Most students just go along to get along, just like most people go along to get along, particularly when they are told that it makes them morally superior to walk out of class for some sort of cause or another. Um, but there, there were some students who decided to go wild in Tennessee. There were some students who tore down an American flag and jumped on a cop car during the walkout, which is just delightful. So you can see them. Uh, here they are. They're walking around. They go over to the flagpole, and uh, they are taking down the American flag. 
during the walkout, which is just uh, which is glorious. And here they are rushing a cop car. So uh, this is at Antioch High School, I guess, in Tennessee, and making tr kids making trouble. Not not a grave shock there. Uh, you know, we saw this before. I mean, last week there was a walkout as well, and it was in California, and there were a bunch of students who essentially went wild. Now, that was not representative of these rallies. The only reason that I'm pointing this out is to point out that young people, who are supposed to be our leaders, sometimes are very stupid. Okay, just like old people are sometimes very stupid. And so granting them, conferring upon them some sort of grand intellectual legitimacy because they're young seems to me really, really foolish. This was, in fact, as I say, a left propaganda effort. If you don't believe me, here's what it looked like when Bernie Sanders showed up at the walkout. Right? So no Republicans were invited to the walkout. No Republicans were invited to speak at the walkout. None of them were invited to the steps of the Capitol for the walkout. But Bernie Sanders walked out to join the students in the gun protest, and he was treated like a hero. This is a clip 15, actually. Uh, here's what it looked like when he was walking through the crowd. Right, all the kids are going nuts. Oh my God, it's Bernie Sanders, yeah, but this isn't a political rally. Right, they're all smiling and laughing and taking pictures. Oh my God, it's the old man, the old cuckoo likes pudding. What are we gonna do? But don't worry, this had nothing to do with politics, folks. This was beyond politics. This had nothing to do with the political agenda. This was just about solidarity with the victims in Parkland. It was not political in any way. This is the way the media were playing it last night. Of course, Bernie Sanders speaking and shouting for gun control is an amazing thing, considering that Bernie Sanders comes from Vermont, a state with very little gun control, even though it is a very left state. Here's Bernie Sanders speaking yesterday. And the if you can't hear crazy old Bernie going, you, the young people of this country, are leading the nation. Please give me money, please, for my next campaign. The time, the and the time is now for all of us together to stand up to the enemy. The time is now for me to pretend to be relevant as though I had done anything except run for president in my entire career. So Bernie Sanders stepping out, and of course, you're not seeing any actual discussion here. Now, a, a guy who, uh, who I've become friendly with, Kyle Cash, of a student over at Parkland, uh, at the Parkland High School, um, he actually went around on Capitol Hill, did more than Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders has refused to meet with him. Apparently, there are a bunch of other legislatures, le legislators, right and left, who have met with him. And uh, Cash has done a lot of the work that uh, the, the, kids at, the other kids at uh, his high school won't. Right? He's actually going around trying to, trying to speak with various members of the legislature. He spoke with Marco Rubio and Bill Nelson. He spoke with Chuck Schumer. And he, spoke with, uh, and he spoke with Paul Ryan. So he's met with a bunch of legislators. He's met with President Trump. The idea here, trying to come to some sort of consensus about things that can be done. The kids at Marjorie Stoneman High School, though, they, the, the ones who are being shown on the media, are not the ones who are meeting with legislators on Capitol Hill. They are the ones instead appearing on Ellen and then shouting about how America's a terrible, horrible, very bad place where the old people suck, right? They're the ones who go on Bill Maher and say, F my parents, which is just a, a great way of getting things done, which, again, shows there's a lot about moral posturing and not very much about getting anything done. You can see the media's bias here. So Viacom Networks decided to go silent for 17 minutes uh, in order to, this is Nickelodeon and, uh, and, all, and MTV, they went silent for 17 minutes in order to pay tribute to the Parkland students. They would say, oh, this isn't political at all, except that I don't remember them doing this after the Boston Marathon bombing. I don't remember them doing this uh, after, the, after the Orlando shooting. I don't remember them doing this after any terror attack. They only do this after a particular shooting that is driving a particular narrative on a particular day, at a particular time, when everyone else was walking out. So here's what it, it looked like on Viacom Networks last, uh, yesterday morning. They printed on their screen, Viacom stands with all students as they participate in the national school walkout against gun violence. Right, so that's VH1, it's TV Land, it's, it's Paramount, it's uh, Nick Jr. Right, so if, you're, if you just want to put your kid down for a second, have them watch Nick Jr., you couldn't do that because Viacom was busy protesting with all the kids. Listen, they're a corporation, but this corporate virtue signaling is really amazing. Uh, and it's obvious that all the people in Hollywood who proclaim they have no political agenda have a pretty obvious political agenda. They, again, they would not do this. If there were a school walkout against the violence of the murder of the unborn, and there are many, many, many more children who are killed in the womb every year than are killed in schools every year, no question Viacom does nothing. And not only does nothing, probably puts on Linda Ellerby to talk about why it is that abortion should be legal. And so th there is a political agenda on the part of the media. And this is the part that really is, is galling. It's the part that kind of makes you sick to your stomach a little bit, is the lie that this is apolitical. I'm fine with you politicking. You want to politic? Go ahead. You want to be pro-gun control? Fine with me. But don't pretend that it's news coverage. When CNN puts on a town hall that is essentially a show trial on behalf of gun control, don't pretend that that's, neutral arbiter, that, that, that's you being a neutral arbiter of the facts. It is not. And if you're the media and you proclaim all you care about is ratings on the one hand 
and and just pleasing people on the other, entertaining people on the other, then don't claim that this is apolitical because this is not apolitical. It obviously is incredibly political.